Welcome back to episode 17 of the Greek Freaks podcast. I'm your host, Ian Quinn. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Michael Cutler. And today we have a special guest, Jack Jones. Hello, Jack. Would you like to introduce us to the epic poem Beowulf, which we will be discussing today? Of course, Ian. Uh, So today I think we're going to talk about the uh, literary elements of Beowulf. So the five... Uh, literary elements we will be uh, focusing on are theme, cause and effect, inference, opposing viewpoint, and author's intention. So starting off with theme, um, one of the themes that uh, I notice in Beowulf, uh, especially in the scene where Beowulf fights the dragon, uh, one of the themes is that the cycle of courtesy offers restitution for epic heroes. So the cycle of courtesy is the idea that um, heroes or people are given gifts by God, and they're called to serve others with these gifts, therefore kind of glorifying God and serving him as well. So throughout the poem, uh, Beowulf exemplifies this by uh, using his gifts of strength and his physical gifts uh, in order to save the Danes, um, help the Geats, like rule his kingdom. Um, and he's glorifying God in doing this by serving other people. So um, as Beowulf does this, Wiglaf, one of the Geats, is inspired by it. And in the, ba- in the battle with the dragon, when Beowulf's uh, kind of losing, Beowulf, or not Beowulf, Wiglaf steps up uh, and comes to his aid. So Beowulf dies in the battle, and after the battle um, with the dragon, Beowulf gives Wiglaf his throne and position as king. And Wiglaf honors his legacy in a speech, and Beowulf's also honored at his funeral, uh, kind of showing how Beowulf has this restitution for fulfilling the cycle of courtesy. Um, and Heaney also kind of incorporates this into this idea of restitution in Beowulf's funeral uh, by showing this idea of a fire. And he talks about how the fire uh, results in Beowulf kind of returning to heaven through the smoke. Uh, and this is a perfect example or like picture of how the cycle of courtesy within Beowulf has kind of come to an end. He's returning to God, uh, and his legacy is still being carried on, uh, even in his restitution. Awesome. Thank you, Jack. That's, uh, that's really good stuff. Um, so I'm going to be talking about our next topic in liter- literary element, uh, cause and effect. So one of the causes in uh, the scene with Beowulf and the dragon comes earlier in the book actually in the scene between Grendel and Beowulf um in that in that scene Beowulf helps save the day by defeating Grendel and actually eventually defeating Grendel's mother um and after that he's showered with gifts from Hrothgar and the Geats and he ends up giving these Geats back giving this these gifts back um not only to the Geats but also to his own people and his king um and after that he becomes a role model not only for the Geats but also for his own people um, and so later on in the story, in the scene with the dragon and Beowulf, um, one of the effects is that Wiglaf, uh, one of the geats that Beowulf chose to be in his armed guard when he goes to, do, to uh, take on the dragon, um, is eventually inspired by this her- heroism that Beowulf has shown in the past and the kindness that he also showed his people um, by giving them gifts. Um, and so, so this heroism and kindness that Beowulf shows eventually inspires Wiglaf to help Beowulf um, in his time of need when the rest of the Geats abandoned him, and that was a huge effect um, as, a, as Wiglaf was a large part of defeating the dragon. Um, so next I'm going to talk about our next literary element, which is inference. Uh, one of the main inferences that are, the reader needs to make um, in the scene between Beowulf and the dragon is that Wiglaf will eventually become the next epic hero or the next character like Beowulf. Uh, for example, when Beowulf is dying, he tells Wiglaf that he wishes he could have had a son um, that he could give his armor and his glory and his throne to. Um, and therefore, he says that he's going to give it to Wiglaf, kind of like how Beowulf received gifts from Hrothgar and the Geats. Um, 
Additionally, he also tells Wiglaf to go look at the treasure um, in the cave where the that the dragon defended after, when he dies. Um, and Wiglaf ends up doing this and t- takes as much treasure as he could. Uh, so that's another way that Wiglaf becomes an, the epic hero. And then Beowulf also gives him his gold collar, war shirt, and helmet. Um, on top of that, Beowulf also s- always says that he does everything through the will of God. And it is said that the dragon's treasure can only be accessible to someone by the will of God. And therefore, we can assume that Wiglaf is the next Beowulf and the next epic hero because God wills him. Um, God wills it. Uh, therefore, the reader needs to make this inference that Wiglaf will become the next epic hero uh, to understand this important scene in the book. Thank you, Michael. So I'll be taking the final two liter- literary elements, the opposing viewpoint and author's intention. So one of the main themes in the story is the idea of fate versus free will. Many people make the point that Beowulf possesses free will in this scene because he, go- he goes to fight the dragon out of choice. But this is not true because Beowulf, who is presented as a Christ-like figure, is going to fight the dragon to fulfill God's will for him, which will, which will lead to his tragic death. So just as Jesus Christ willingly carried his cross to his own crucifixion out of God's will and to save humanity, uh, Beowulf holds his head high as he knowingly journeys to his eventual death against, in the battle against the dragon, and he does all of this out of, out of God's will and to protect his people. Moving on to the final literary element, author's intention. The author's intention is to let this final battle once again, uh, represent Jesus's crucifixion. Jesus did not want to be crucified, but he still sacrificed himself for his people. Similarly, Beowulf did not necessarily want to fight the dragon, but he still followed through with God's will and eventually fell to his death. He also leaves a lasting legacy in his kingdom, similar to that of Jesus Christ with the Christian religion. Heaney, an Irish Catholic, was trying to project his own beliefs into a predominantly pagan setting, essentially switch, switching it from a pagan poem to a Catholicism, Christianity-based poem. So this aspect of the battle is one of the, is one of the many ways that he is able to do this. And that is all that we have today. Thank you so much for joining us on episode 17. We will see you next time. Welcome back to episode 17 of the Greek 